All right, we're back for day 13 of Advent of Code. Here we go. Oh, okay. Um, fewest tokens you have to spend to win all possible prizes. One prize has to be positioned exactly above the prize. You have two buttons. Um, okay, so this is going to be uh, like a extended Euclidean algorithm thing. Um, number of button presses, minimum number of button presses in order to get to this location, I think. Um, yeah, so I guess let's do this. Um, This worked fine. Each button we need to press no more than 100 times to win a prize. How else would be someone? Okay, so, so we can just brute force it for the first part. Um, okay, uh, where do you start? You start at zero, zero? Um, I think you start at zero, zero. Okay, uh, first let's brute force it because the EGCD things have taken a while, right? This um, and then the pause is going to be uh, no. This is I. This is both J. Um, J is the number of presses of the. No, no, it, it was this. Yeah, OK. Um, uh, this is fewest tokens. Okay. It's just this. What is this S doing here at the end? Okay, well, not the right answer. Um, okay, so I misread something. Um, first, let's do that. Okay, well, that's not great. Um, Try sample input? I'm doing something wrong. Oh, okay. And then, so for this one, 26, 66. Is the parsing correct? I hope so. 67, 21. And then, where's the starting position? Uh, I still haven't figured out the starting position exactly, but I'm not worrying about that too much. Um. I'm doing this right, right? There's the X, there's the Y. Hmm. The first one in the list was not the one with the problem. Um, the second one, oh, there's no combination that will ever win a prize. Ah, shoot. Um, uh, okay, let's get rid of this. The answer still not the right answer. Uh, was the sample input correct? Two forty four. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, that's not right. So let's do this. I plus J. Uh, let's do the sample input, not the real one. One twenty and one twenty four. 120. Oh, I did not realize how the presses, how much they cost. Ah, shoot. It costs three for the A and one for the B. Ah, that's rough. 480, okay. I just cannot read text today. That is brutal. 
Oh, it's just this one. Six seconds. It did give the correct sample input. Three seconds. 191. Okay. Um, unit conversion error. Position every prize is actually way higher. Um, okay. Yeah, so now this is just going to be extended Euclidean algorithm. Um, and for this, we will look up EGCD in Python. I think that there's, oh, come on, this will work. Um, OK, and then if I recall correctly, I think what we want is EGCD of a couple numbers. Um, so oh, no, this is actually a system of equations. Um, this is not that simple. Um, yeah, the question is, oh, technically it's an integer lattice problem, but we should be able to just solve the system of linear equations, I think. Um, hopefully. Um, yeah, so let's just try this. Can I actually do that? Um, no. Maybe I could do this. Cool. So that's moving one in one direction. Uh, whoops. My A needs to be transposed. Okay. And then this reflects pressing A once and pressing B zero times. And then this is like one and one. Um, and now the question is, this matrix times something is equal to this vector. So I think we just want to like np dot win out dot solve. Um, and then this is our matrix. And then our target is going to be this. If this is not integer, then I'm going to be sad. Um, I don't know if that is an integer or not. Um, uh, that doesn't look like an integer. Um, oh, it's still not going to be possible. The second and fourth claw machines. Okay. Uh, well, is it integer for those? Um, 26, 67, 66, 61. I remember to transpose it this time. Um, and the thing that we're going to solve for now is this one and this one. Um, is that integer? That is an integer. Okay, that's cool. Um, I think we can use numpy then. Um, let's just do that. So now uh, not array. And then I think it was so I think it should be a b and then transpose, um, and then solve a against um, p. I should put that here for some reason, um, and then specifically what we'll do is I guess this. I don't know how important it is the shapes right here, but I'm just going to be a little careful, and then. Um, this is also integer, right? Uh, okay, it was one comma zero. See, so yeah, that's why I tested it. Um, hmm. uh, we might need to double check the thing, but uh, we'll get to that when we get there. So press A, press B. Um, if, um, what is the thing I want to do? I want to do this, like, plus uh, mod 1, maybe? I'm trying to check if this thing is, like, really close to 0. Um, I don't know what the error I should expect on these is going to be. The plus is in case it's, like, just below. Um, like, I want to check if it's, like, very close to an integer here. Um, I 
think we can do something like this. Um, actually, no, I should just do, I should just round it. I should round it and then just check to make sure that it, it backsolves. Um, if press A times A0, press B times B0 is equal to P0. Then we're good. Um, and in this case, No, I submitted the letter V. Uh, well, now I have 56 seconds to try the sample input. Um, all right. On this one, I get take many more than 100 presses to do so. It's it doesn't give an answer for the sample input. Figure out how to win as many prizes, as few tokens you'd have to spend to win all possible prizes. Does not give a sample sample output. That's crazy, right? Is this advent of code that I'm doing? Um, has have we ever had a case where there's been no? This number is a lot smaller than this number, which makes me concerned. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty worried about this. Um, let's just see what some of the numbers are. Oh, it's because I forgot to do the thing. I forgot to add the this big number. That was a good catch. Um, the answer from before was still this one, so that's good. Um, and then now, uh, p0 equals this. After the nums, there's an answer. Make sure I paste it this time. Rank 136, OK. Ooh. Uh, I wonder how close it was the leaderboard on this part. Um, let's see, I got this at 12.11, and leaderboard filled at 11.04, 12.11, okay, without the one minute lockout, nah, I, I think I still would have, like, if I had not written bugs, obviously, I would have made leaderboard, um, but, uh, just if I had not typed the letter V, then I think I still would not have made it, um, because my, I would have submitted, uh, this tiny number. It is weird that they didn't give a sample output for this input. Um, that really threw me off, but yeah. Um, cool, so I guess I can explain the question real quick. Um, I will note that I did not, um, oh wait, no, I think that's true. Yeah, um, okay, cool, anyways, yeah, so the, um, Sorry, I was like thinking about my solution and thinking how to explain it. Um, the input we are given, um, we have these two buttons that can like control the position of a claw in a claw machine. We have a target position to get to. And it asks for each of these um, instances, how many times we need to press each button in order to, to get to uh, this target location. And um, it also tells us that it will be less than 100 uh, less than 100 presses of each button. Um, so the naive thing to do here is just to try all possible um, numbers of presses, like up to 100 for button A and button B. Um, 100 squared is like fine, so you can just, you basically just brute force it. Um, and you check to see if you get the prize to any one of those. And if you do, then you keep the minimum one of those, because it asks about the minimum number of button presses. Um, or technically maybe ask about the minimum number of um, um, tokens, yeah, and tokens, this also took me a second to realize, tokens is not number of button presses, it's three tokens for an A button and one token for a B button. Um, yeah, I just did not read this that carefully. That, that probably cost me a good chunk of time. Um, and uh, yeah, and that is what you do for the first part. Um, and then the second part says, okay, now the target coordinates are all, like, add this big number to them. Um, now it's going to take way more than 100 presses, but still like solve it. Um, oh, another thing you have to deal with, by the way, is some of these are not like obtainable, um, and this is still true in the second part. 
Um, but yeah, so the thing, the approach that I took for this is that you can see this as like a system of linear equations. Um, if you have like this target, um, then really what you have is you have like two unknowns here. You have like the number of A presses, the number of B presses. Um, and the equations you're trying to satisfy are like, you need the x-coordinate to match and the y-coordinate to match. Um, for the x-coordinate to match, you want 94 times A plus 22 times B, because these are the things that modify your x-coordinate, needs to be equal to this. Um, and then for the, the y-coordinate, it's like very similar, um, except it's this number. And uh, yeah, this is just a system of linear equations. And a thing you will note here is that, um, so you could just solve these. It is also the case that the solution is unique unless these equations are like both the same equation. I don't actually know if there are any of those in the sample input. Um, I'm not sure if, um, I assume NumPy handles this correctly. Um, let's just try it. Uh, got solved. Uh, Linalge.solve. Um, okay, it does complain about a singular matrix there. Um, so I guess we just got lucky and Eric did not give us any evil inputs. Um, although I guess I would have seen the error and that fixed it. I would have fixed it, presumably. Um, but, but yeah, anyways. Um, system of linear equations and you just, you just solve. Um, the way that I check to see whether the solution is actually possible or not is what you really want to know is if there's an integer solution to this problem. Um, and so you just solve it and then check to see if the solution is integer. If the solution is non-integer, so like because the solution is unique, um, because we're assuming there's no singular matrices, um, then um, if you get like if you get non-integer solutions, then you know that it's not possible to reach the prize. Um, actually, checking for these things being integers is like a little tricky because this number is sufficiently large that you start to worry about floating point imprecision. Um, for example, when I did this solve, I got like this. Uh, it's got like a little bit of epsilon at the end. This is actually substantially larger than most epsilons. Um, so checking if a float is like basically an integer, ignoring the epsilon is kind of annoying. Um, I was trying to do something earlier where I would like, you could do float modulus in Python, which is pretty sick. Um, so you can do like this. Um, so you could do some check, like make sure that this is less than uh, 1e minus 4. That's like one way you can check it. It's a little bit weird because in the case that you're like just below an integer, this will fail. Um, whoa, why did I do that? I have too many nines. There we go. Um, I guess with too many nines, this as a float just like deletes some of the nines. Oh yeah, that's interesting. Um, but if I had a more reasonable number of nines, um, this check would fail even though this basically is an integer. So the thing I was trying to do was something weird, like 1e minus 4. I think some check like this is kind of robust. But in the end, I did something a lot simpler, which is just round this number and then see, like plug it back into the equation, which is all has integer values, and just check to see, does it now match? Um, yeah, so that was what I ended up going with. And um, that, that did work. Uh, I just had a few bugs that caused me to lose a bit of time. but. Um, yeah, that is all there is to it for day 13 of Advent of Code. Um, yeah, oh, I guess I didn't explain the bit about um, NumPy Linalge solve, uh, but this just solves a system of linear equations. You, you give it the matrix for the left side and then the, um, the vector you're targeting on the right side, and uh, it, just, it just does it. So, yeah, cool. Well, I will see you all tomorrow.